Now for the second part of the tail, we're going to start with the magic circle again. And we're going to start it the exact same way. So again, the slip knot. And then the six single crochet into the center of the magic circle. Go ahead and close it. And again, we're going to start with two single crochet into every stitch around for a total of 12 stitches in the round and then come back. Then we're going to make three increase rounds in chronological order. The first increase round is going to be one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch and then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Again remember that the stitch count is going to be increasing for each increase round. It will be an increase of six stitches for the round. So the next increase round is going to be one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around. And then the next increase round is going to be one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the fourth stitch. You should have 30 stitches in the round after finishing that last increase round. Now go ahead and move your yarn marker up to where you left off and you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of 10 rounds and then come back. After you finish your 10 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around, we're going to make an increase round. So go ahead and take your yarn marker and move it up to where you left off. And for this increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into four stitches. and then make two single crochet into the fifth stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. One single crochet into four stitches and then two single crochet into the fifth stitch. Now you should have a stitch count of 36 after that round. Then go ahead, move your yarn marker up, and then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for three rounds. Then after your three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, we're going to make our last increase round. Go ahead and take your yarn marker and move it up. And you're going to make one single crochet into five stitches. And then make two single crochet into the sixth stitch and then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you should have 42 st stitches in the round. Then go ahead and move the yarn marker up and then the last three rounds you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around. So one single crochet in every stitch for three rounds and then come back. Then you can go ahead and remove your yarn marker and we're going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook. Then you're going to go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and then just pull enough yarn through so you can help sew the top part of the tail. So now you have the first part of the tail and the second part of the tail. Go ahead and set these two pieces aside for now. We're going to make the third part of the tail. So for the top part of the tail, we're going to start it the same way. 
We're going to start with the magic circle and again you're going to start with the slip knot and then place six single crochet into the magic circle. And then you can go ahead and close it. And then you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around for a total of 12 stitches and then come back so now you should be an expert at chronological increase rounds so we're going to be making all the way up to a single crochet into eight stitches and then two single crochet into the ninth stitch and again for the first increase round you're going to make one single crochet into one stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker for the next increase round you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch then one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the fourth stitch and again each round you're going to be increasing by a total of six stitches. One single crochet into four stitches and then two single crochet into the fifth stitch. One single crochet into five stitches and then two single crochet into the sixth stitch. One single crochet into six stitches and then two single crochet into the seventh stitch. Two more increase rounds for this increase round, one single crochet into seven stitches and then two single crochet into the eighth stitch. Then the last increase round will be one single crochet into eight stitches and then two single crochet into the ninth stitch. So now you should have a total of 60 stitches in the round. You can go ahead and remove the yarn marker and then you're going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch over just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch then you're going to finish off just yarn over and then pull enough yarn through to help sew this portion this top portion of the tail in place and now we're ready to sew the pieces of the tail together so you have three pieces for the tail go ahead and take that first piece and the second piece and we're going to take our tapestry needle you're going to get the same colored yarn on the tapestry needle and then this portion to the left is going to sew to the squirrel's body and then this portion is going to be where we sew the second piece of the tail so you're going to take and open up that bottom portion of the second piece and this portion is going to center you want to center this first piece on top of the second piece so you can see how it kind of fits around the edge of the circle on that second piece then you're going to take your tapestry needle and you're going to go in and out and then just sew the two pieces together and you can make several rounds as you as you sew it together make sure that you leave a long loose yarn end for burying into your work and then you just take and finish sewing all the way around and then just sew it around as many times as you need to to make sure that it's nice and secure and you can reach in and open it up too if you need to and then just sew it in place. 
So now you can see how the two pieces look after I've sewn them together. They're nice and secure. So this is the right side. This is the side that will sew onto the squirrel. And now we're going to sew the third piece in place. Now for this piece I'm going to hide the seam. So here you can see how you see the seam a little bit. So on this one I'm going to show you how to hide the seam. So just take, this is the right side of the tail, and then this is the wrong side with the loose yarn end in the center. Go ahead and lay that, both right sides together, on top of the tail. And then just take and tie a knot. And then you're ready to sew along the edge. Now the only thing you want to make sure that you remember is this is the side again that's going to be sewn onto the squirrel. So you're going to want to leave this side open. So I'm going to place yarn markers where I want to leave the portion open. So for mine, I placed yarn markers so I can keep an eye on where I want the opening to be in the back of the tail. So remember, this is attached to the body of the squirrel. So here, going up the back of the tail, I want this portion open. So I placed yarn markers. Here is the first stitch, and then I counted over 12 stitches and placed the other yarn marker in the 12th stitch. I'm going to keep including the yarn marker, all of these stitches are going to be kept open. Then, when you lay the top portion, remember this is the right side, so when I lay the right side up, I want, I have a yarn marker in place here, so I have a yarn marker here, I want this open, and then I'm counting over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. And then I place a yarn marker there. So I want this all open on top of this back opening. So these yarn markers will line up. And then we'll have an opening when we're finished. We'll have an opening like that after we're finished sewing this top portion in place. So now you're just going to take, after you get your yarn markers in place, you're going to get your tapestry needle with the same colored yarn for sewing. Then remember you want the right sides together. And then you grab your tapestry needle and then you're just going to take and match up the yarn marker and you're going to sew the two pieces together. This is my loose yarn and I'm just going to put that in there. And then I'm just going to take the top stitch on the second part of the tail, top stitch of the top of the tail, and then remember I want these stitches open so I'm just going to sew up to those yarn markers that I placed. and then I'm going to head back. And then just sew back across. And as I sew across, I'm going to line up the two edges, the top of the tail and the second portion of the body. And I'm just sewing the, the edge, the top edge, together. And then as I get to the other edge, you can just move it so that the edges line up. So move that top portion and the second portion and just line up the edges and continue sewing until you get to the yarn markers that you placed. Now you can see that I'm sewing along the edge and now I'm getting close to the yarn markers so what I'm going to do is just kind of fold my work so I match my yarn markers 
and you can see how that brings the edges nicely together and then just keep sewing the top onto that second part of the tail. Then you can see how I've reached my yarn markers. I'm going to go ahead and remove my yarn markers and then I'm going to take and tie a knot Messed up that knot. So anyway, tie a knot, and then the loose yarn end can just go into the inside. I'm going to fix my knot here. There, that's better. Then you can take and close the top on the, the top of the tail. Then you can see how the seam is more on the inside of the tail than it is on the outside. This is going to be covered anyway but I just wanted to show you a way that you can kind of hide the seam on there and then what you're going to do is take and stuff the inside of the tail so you can see how I stuffed a little bit into the tail and you can always stuff more later and you can see how I have the opening on this side and the opening on the opposite side that's how you want it to be then just take and you're going to join your yarn into the corner you can chain one and then just tie a knot and then just grab a yarn marker then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for three rounds. So one single crochet in every stitch around for three rounds. So so far I finished one round and I had about it's an approximate number of stitches depending on how you sewed it on but my stitch count is approximately 33 to 35 and I'm making three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. So after you finish your three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, now we're going to make our decrease rounds. So go ahead and move your yarn marker up and you can finish stuffing it as you close with craft stuffing. For the first decrease round you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches and then single crochet two stitches together and then repeat that pattern all the way back to the yarn marker so I had 28 stitches after completing that round that decrease round now we're going to make another decrease round for this decrease round you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches and then single crochet two stitches together and then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker so I had 21 stitches in the round after finishing that round this is how my work is looking then just take and move your yarn marker up and now you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for three rounds so three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. Then you can take and finish stuffing the tail because we're going to get ready to close. So now you can go ahead and remove your yarn marker and then you're just going to slip stitch. You're going to decrease and then slip stitch close. So go ahead and make your decrease stitches all the way around just like we did with the legs. You're just going to make decrease stitches all the way around until you're almost closed. Then you can take and skip a stitch and then go into the next stitch 
for a slip stitch and then just slip stitch closed. And then as soon as you finish closing, I'm going to close, make one more slip stitch and that should do it for mine. Then you're going to go ahead and just finish off. So you just yarn over and then just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Then you can just take a tapestry needle, put it onto that loose yarn end, and then just go right in where you tied your knot and then just come out anywhere and then just trim the loose yarn end and then you have your tail ready to decorate so you can sew your tail on first if you want to but for mine I'm going to go ahead and put the loops of yarn that I want first and for this squirrel, depending on how you're going to decorate your tail um, is how you're going to create the design that you want. And I'll show you different, I made a lot of different designs for my squirrel tails and my skunk tails so I'll show you what I did and this one is also going to be a little different. So it's the same thing as far as the looping of the yarn so I want to make her tail with this beautiful snuggle up mink colored brown yarn in combination with a little color with the fleece color which is what we used for her face and her body so I haven't done the front body strip yet with you but I'll be showing you how to make that with this yarn a little later so first what we're going to do is we're just going to get some of the alternate colored yarn and in this case I'm using my fleece colored yarn and you just want to get a good amount of the yarn on your tapestry needle and then depending on where you want to put the design I'm going to put a little strip underneath the tail so on the back of the tail this open part is going to attach to the body of the squirrel so underneath is where I want to run a strip of the alternate color so I'm going to start at the tip and I'm going to go a little bit towards the top of the tip because I want to make two rows of loops with this yarn. So you're going to bring the yarn through and you're going to leave the length that you want for your yarn. So for mine it's going to be approximately three inches that I'm going to leave as the length for my loops. So I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot and then I'm just going to take and loop the yarn down the tail so I'm going to take about a stitch or two and I'm just going to bring the yarn through until I have the loop the same size as my starting length for the loose yarn end so now I have a loop the same length and you're just going to keep looping, grabbing a stitch and looping the yarn in a straight line, trying to get the same length all the way down the length of the tail. Don't go past the magic circle at the bottom of the tail. Now, I just finished putting all the yarn that I had on my tapestry needle. If you like the look of the looped yarn, then you can just leave it with the looped yarn, but I'm going to show you an alternate style. I have the looped yarn that I'll show you that style as well as this style. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what I did with this style. So on this style, I cut the loops, the individual loops, and just tied a knot. So if you like this style that I did for the female squirrel, then you can go ahead and cut your loops and make sure that you tie a knot for each of them. 
If you like how I brushed out the hair on the tail, I use this slicker brush by Vibrant Life. Here's some more information about this brush, and this is what it looks like. Then, after you're finished placing all the loops and tying a knot, then you can take your brush and just take and brush out the yarn. And then it gives it a kind of a fuzzy appearance. And then you can just take any of this excess fuzz and use it as stuffing. So go ahead and decorate your tail and then what you can do is stuff the bottom part of the tail and then you're going to sew it onto the back of the squirrel with your tapestry needle. So you just take and line up, after you stuff it, go ahead and stuff the bottom portion and then line it up on the back of the squirrel. So I'm going to show you how I do that after I finish decorating my bottom portion of the tail. Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and show you how to sew it on because I can decorate it after it's sewn on. So just take the same colored yarn as your the main color of your project and then put it on your tapestry needle. And then you want to line up after you stuff it with craft stuffing the bottom of the tail. You want to line it up. Make sure that you line it up with the back of the squirrel so that it's straight. And then line it up so that this bottom edge is with the bottom of the squirrel. So here you can see that I'm about one, two, three, four, five rounds up. And you want to make sure that it's lined up correctly on the back of the squirrel before you start sewing. Then you can take and sew the tail in place. Make sure you leave enough of a loose yarn end for tying a knot. And then you just sew all around the base of the tail, securing it to the squirrel's body. So here is my squirrel's tail after sewing it in place. You can see how I sewed it all around the base. And then this, the tail stays straight up, but now you can decorate it all down the back. And then later on we can sew it to the body if we need to. So for now you want it hanging like this and you should have only sewn right around the base of the tail to the body. And this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like on the bottom. Now you're ready to decorate your tail. So I'm going to show you some of my other decorations too for some of the other tails. So for Chip, you can see where I looped along the bottom of the tail and then I looped everything else with the Bernat Pipsqueak brown yarn. And then I'm going to show you how to make this piece too at the end after we're finished decorating. This goes on the bottom of the tail. So on this portion right here. And the reason why I have this piece here is because the tail will get heavy and lean the squirrel back a little. So that helps to prop up the tail so that the squirrel is able to sit easily. So it has no problems sitting when you put that piece. And I'll show you that later. So that'll go on the bottom after we're finished decorating the tail. So here you can see I'm starting chip the same way that I start with the female. However, I left the loops on chip and then I'm combing out her tail. So that's the only difference. As well as the style of yarn, I'm going to use this gorgeous, pretty color yarn for her. And then 
For Chip, I used the Bernat Pipsqueak yarn, and you'll have plenty of this yarn left over to make more than one squirrel. Now for the skunk's squirrel, this is Pepe Le Pew. You see how far I've gotten on him. So, so far, what I did was I started with him instead of starting on the underneath of the tail like I did for Chip and the female squirrel. I started on the skunk's tail with the center black strip and I only looped the yarn. I just left the loops of yarn. Then after I finished the center I made the two rows of white on both sides to give the skunk appearance and then the rest of the tail I made with black and it's really soft. I love this yarn. This yarn will also work well with my border collie dog, crochet border collie dog. So now when you come back you'll have your tail all decorated and then we'll move on to the next part. So this is what the tail looks like after I'm finished. Looks gorgeous. And then here's what it looks like with the bottom yarn on the bottom of the tail. And I used this colored yarn to sew the tail to the back of the body. That way it blends in with the fur and you don't see it. So I carefully just go through the body and through the tail. And then I just leave, after I tie a knot, I leave the long loose yarn ends as part of the fur. And it just kind of holds her tail up a little bit against the body. So now we're going to get her legs. So actually first we'll sew on her arms. It'll be easier if you sew her arms on first. So go ahead and get both of her arms. So here are her arms ready to be sewn on. Now what I do with her feet is I just kind of make sure that her feet, that where I'm going to place her feet and her bottom of her thigh should be flush with the bottom of the body. Then you can kind of determine where the arm should be. So the arm should be about right here. So then I'm ready to sew the arms on and then you would just sew the other arm on in the same place. So you want them to be equal. So you measure them out to make sure that they're equal. And then you just take your tapestry needle and then you just sew it in place. Just go in and out just on the edge of the arm. This is what my arm looks like after sewing in place it goes back and forth and then you're just going to sew the other arm on the same way just make sure you line them up so that the arms aren't crooked they should be symmetrical on both sides so now I have the arms sewn on and you can see how they're equal and they open up and now we're ready to sew the legs on so now you're going to get both of the legs and we're going to sew those on. So you're going to take and the body will be in the center and you're going to take your first leg. Make sure that you're aware of which way the leg is pointing. You don't want to put the, the leg on backwards. So make sure that the foot is pointing up. Then you're just going to take your long, I use my long upholstery needle now for sewing on the legs and stuff for my amigurumi. I just love it. If you're going to use this, you just have to be very careful because it is very sharp and it can be dangerous for kids. So you want to keep it out of the way if you have children. But then you just take your needle and you're going to find the side of the leg and you're going to go about I usually go let's see here's where I closed up so one two three four five six seven eight nine I'm about ten rows down and then I'm going to go through and then I make sure that I come out at the same level on the opposite side so I just find out where about I want to come out so I want to come out about here on the opposite side just be careful you don't poke yourself. You don't want to poke your finger. 
So you just kind of gently bring the needle through and I was able to bring it right where about where I want and then you just bring it through and then you want to make sure that on the body that the leg is going to sit flush with the body so you want to go into the body and mine is about one two three four five six seven eight nine rows up and I'm just checking it and you can see how the bottom of the thigh of the leg is flush with the bottom of the body which is what I want so once I have the position and I know about where I want to go in then you could set the body down and you just kind of put your finger about where you want to go in that way you have an idea of where you want to go and then you just bring the needle through and I'm just going to put my tapestry needle here so I don't lose it so here you just bring the thread through and make sure you leave a long enough loose yarn end on the other side so it doesn't get pulled into the leg and that you have enough for tying a knot and cinching down the legs to the body. So then you can take and bring the needle through the body and again you want to go go through at the same level so you kind of follow the level over to the other side and then you just want to make sure that you're coming out on the side of the body. So then you can see how I'm bringing the needle through on the opposite side of the body. Just making sure that the leg doesn't get tangled. So then I just bring it through and I leave about a couple inches worth of string between. Then you're going to take the other leg and you're going to go through at about the same level. And again, you want to make sure that the leg is going to be pointing up. You don't want to put the leg on backwards. And you just do the same thing. Make sure that you're coming out on the opposite side. Sorry, my phone's going off the hook right now. So then you can just kind of pull it through. And again, I leave about two inches between the body and the leg and then I'm going to go right back through and I usually stay about a stitch away from where I exited so I'm going to go about a stitch I'm going a stitch lower down and then I'm just going to go right through and come out about a stitch over on the opposite side so you can see how I'm staying about a stitch away and be careful you don't run into the string. You don't want to poke the other string and get the string all tangled if you can avoid that because then it makes it harder to pull the string and cinch the legs to the body. And then the same thing with the body, just a stitch over and then you're just going to go right back through. Now I like to do this twice. So as soon as I go through the body and both legs I'm going to go back through again because I just like to have at least four strands between the legs and the bodies the body just to make sure it's nice and secure so it's it's up to you on personal preference regarding what you want to do So here again you can see now, and you can kind of pull the other string back out too if it goes in. And then again I just keep about a couple inches between. And now I'm going to go back in the same way, so about a stitch over. So go ahead, finish sewing the legs on, and when you're finished come back and I'll show you how I cinch down the legs to the body. Then, after I finished going through twice, you go ahead and you just pull on both strings to cinch the legs to the body. 
So just kind of cinch them how you want. And then as soon as you have, you can kind of maneuver the body, make it a little bit thicker if you want. And then once you're happy with how much you have the legs cinched to the body, you can take and just tie a knot. Now some people don't like the dimple that's created, so I'm going to show you how to make something to cover the dimple. So we're going to make a little wheel, a little decorative wheel that goes over to cover the dimple. Some people like to put buttons in here too, but... And the reason why I like this method is because the legs move up and down, which I really like that. So now I'm just going to show you how to cover this if you don't like the dimple that's created. So for now you can just kind of leave the loose yarn ends in there for a little stuffing and then just set this aside for now. I'm going to show you how to make the covering that goes on the legs. So this is the part that I'm going to show you how to make. And I take the loose yarn ends and I just kind of put them into the center little dimple of the leg. And then I just kind of center the piece on the leg and then just sew it in place. So I'm going to show you how to make this piece just to cover. This is what it looks like on the leg. I love it. It looks really pretty. So now I'm going to show you, if you like this, I'm going to show you how I made it. So go ahead and take the main color for your yarn. We're going to start with the magic circle. So just like we've done before. And you're going to start with the slip knot. And then again, you're going to place six single crochet. Just keep it easy. I keep it six. That way you're already familiar with the stitch count, too. Then go ahead and close up the magic circle. Then you're going to place two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round and then come back. Then we're going to make three increase rounds in chronological order. If you need to close the center again you just take and, and pull on that loose yarn end on the back. So for the first increase round you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch repeating that pattern all the way around. Then the last increase round is one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the fourth stitch repeating that pattern all the way around. Then, after you finish that last increase round, go ahead and take and remove the yarn marker and you're going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. So just go into that next stitch, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook. Then you're going to make a chain of two. One, two. And that's going to count as your first half double crochet for the round. So then, you're going to yarn over Go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop. You have three loops on the hook. Go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three loops for a half double crochet. And you're going to make one half double crochet into every stitch around. So yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a half double crochet. So you're making one half double crochet in every stitch around and then come back. Then when you reach the beginning, you're going to go ahead and make a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain two that you made. So just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops for a slip stitch. So now 
we're going to make a puff stitch in between each of the half double crochet stitches. So in between, in the space between the two half double crochets, so here's a half double crochet, here's a half double crochet, we're going to be going into the space between the half double crochets to make our puff stitch. So for the first puff stitch, it's going to be in the next space between the half double crochets. So you're going to yarn over, you're going to go into that space between the two half double crochets. You're going to bring up a loop and you're going to pull that loop up to the size of about a half double crochet or a double crochet. Then you're going to yarn over again going to go into the same space with your crochet hook. You're going to bring up another loop. Bring that loop up equal with all the other loops. Then you're going to yarn over again and go into the same space. Bring up a loop. and That's our last loop. So we're doing it three times. Bring up the loop so that they're the same size. Then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and you're going to go through all the loops except for one. So go through all of the loops except for one of the loops and that's going to leave you with two loops on the hook. Then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through those two remaining loops. And then you just completed a puff stitch. And you're going to make a puff stitch in between every half double crochet stitch. So the next space between the two half double crochets is where you're going to make your next puff stitch. So you yarn over, go into that space, you're going to bring up a loop and again you want to bring that loop up to the size of about a half or double crochet. Then you're going to yarn over again, go into the same space, bring up a loop, Again, bring that loop up equal with all the other loops. Yarn over, go into the same space, bring up a loop, and then that was our third time. Now you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through all of the loops except for one. Then yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through the two remaining loops. And you create this neat little puff stitch design all the way around. So I'm going to make one more with you and then I'll let you finish. So I'm going to yarn over, go into that next space between the two half double crochets. I'm going to bring up a loop and bring it up to the size of the other loops or half double crochet or double crochet size. Then I'm going to yarn over, go again in the same space. Yarn over, go again in the same space. Then I'm going to yarn over, go through all the loops except for one. Yarn over and then go through the two remaining loops to complete a puff stitch. So go ahead, finish your puff stitches all the way around and then come back. So now I finished the puff stitches all the way around. And don't worry if it's curling up a little bit. That's normal because I did one to one. I didn't increase any of the stitches. Then just take and make a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first puff stitch that you made. So go into that top stitch, then you're just going to yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook. Then you're going to go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the piece onto the squirrel or the skunk. And now it's ready to be sewn on. So for mine, Make sure you have the right side up, and then I just kind of tucked the loose yarn end into the dimple of the leg. And it's your decision if you want to add a little stuffing or not. Mine, I, I just laid the piece on top. And you just want to make sure you have it centered in the way that you want it to look. And then once you're happy with how it looks, then you can take your tapestry needle and place it onto the long end that you left for sewing. And then for mine, I just carefully sewed along the outer stitch of the puff stitch. You don't want to mess up the design of your puff stitch. And then I just went in and out and just sewed all around 
the edge. And this is what mine looks like after getting it sewed on. It looks good. So now we're ready. I'm going to show you how to make the belly. Usually I sew that on first, but better late than never. I'm going to show you how to make that. Also, you may notice that the tail may be heavy and pulling the squirrel back. Don't worry. We're going to be sewing a piece here that will help stabilize the squirrel and it will sit perfectly. So don't worry about that right now. I'll show you how to do that. First, let's make the belly cover, the fur for the belly. So you want your fleece colored yarn, the same color that we used for the face. And we're going to start with the slip knot. So you just take the yarn, fold it over on itself to make a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop. And then we're going to make a chain. I'm only going to make four of them on video tutorial with you. First, let's make the slip knot. Go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for your slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that down, and then cinch the, chain, the loop around the hook. Then we're going to make a chain. So for the front of the body, you're going to make a chain of 23. And I'm just going to show you four of them on video tutorial. Just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for one, two, three, four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 23, and then come back. Then you're going to take your crochet hook, and you're going to go into the second chain from the hook. Bring up a loop, and make a single crochet. Then you're going to go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, and make a single crochet. And you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across, and then that will give you a stitch count of 22. Then you're going to make a chain of one, turn your work, and you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch over and then one single crochet into every stitch back across and you're still going to have a stitch count of 22 then after you finish your last single crochet you're going to repeat again chain one and turn your work and you're going to keep repeating this three more times so one single crochet, chain one, one single crochet into the next stitch, and that will give you a stitch count of 22. So this one will count as one, and you need two more after this row. Now, after I finished that last row, you're not going to chain one from here till we're done. So you're just going to, after you finish your last single crochet, no chain one and then just turn your work and then make a single crochet into that next stitch. And then that counts as your first single crochet for this row. Go into the next stitch and make a single crochet. And you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch across. And when you finish this row, you're going to have a stitch count of 21. So again, I just finished my last stitch. I have a stitch count of 21 for that row. And again, no chain one, just turn your work. And you're going to keep repeating this until you have a stitch count of 12. So for this row, you're going to have a stitch count of 20. And again, you would just turn your work, make one single crochet in every stitch across. And then when you reach the end, turn your work, one single crochet in every stitch across. And you'll notice that it'll decrease each row by one stitch count which is what you want. And then when you get down to a stitch count of 12, come back and I'll show you what to do next. So this is how your work should look. You can see how you're forming a little bit of a triangle at the top. And now I'm down to a stitch count of 12. So then you're going to chain one, turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch, and you're just going to repeat this, maintaining the stitch count of 12 for six rows. So you want six rows total of a stitch count of 12. And this row that I'm working on now, so I finished this last row as 12 stitches. 
but this row that I'm starting with you on video tutorial will count as the first one and then five more rows after that for a total of six with a stitch count of 12. Then after you finish the six rows of one single crochet in every stitch you can go ahead and finish off so just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the fur onto the squirrel. So this is how much I have left of this fleece covers color yarn. So it was plenty to make two squirrels. Then you're just going to take the fur for the front of the belly and just put the tapestry needle onto the long end that you left for sewing. And then you're going to take the squirrel and you're just going to center the fur on the front of the body. So you just have to kind of inch it in between the legs. Usually I sew this on first but you can still sew it on after getting the legs and the arms on. So here you can see how I just go in and out with the tapestry needle, sewing it in place. And this is what it looks like after I sewed on the belly. Now I'm going to show you how to make the piece that goes under here to help the squirrel sit up. 